NASA plans to burn the International Space Station in Earth's atmosphere before allowing the unburnt parts to crash into the ocean. Here are the details. The BBC reports that NASA is preparing to burn up the International Space Station and letting the unburnt remains crash into a remote part of the Pacific Ocean. The news comes after the Biden administration said it had committed to extend the space station's activities until 2030. NASA says the first part of the station's termination is to use the aging hulk as a platform for testing the modules that private companies will use to build their own private space stations. Work on the ISS will continue as usual until 2030, but from 2026, the station will be allowed to gradually lose altitude. Between June and November of 2030, three additional uncrewed cargo ships will dock with the station and use their engines to slow it down. When the station reaches an altitude of 280 kilometers, it will pass the point of no return, from where it won't be able to return to a safe orbit. It will then drop into Earth's atmosphere, where most of it will burn up, with the remaining parts falling to Earth. NASA plans to time the station's descent so that the remaining parts will crash into the most remote part of the South Pacific. NASA says it will save $1.3 billion by using private companies to provide platforms and astronauts for activities in low Earth orbit. NASA says this money can then be spent on the exploration of deep space. China used a strange way to complain about Elon Musk's Starlink satellites doing to the Chinese space station, what China had been doing much worse to the ISS since 2007. Here are the details. The Guardian reports that China has complained to the UN about having to maneuver its space station twice to avoid it getting stuck by some of SpaceX's Starlink satellites. In a report that Beijing submitted to the UN's Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, China complained that its space station had to use collision avoidance procedures in July and October to avoid a collision. China also called on the US to bear responsibility for the Starlink incident. This comes only years after China used a missile to blow up one of its satellites in 2007, causing a huge cloud of space debris that forced the International Space Station to do collision avoidance maneuvers multiple times to get out of the way of Chinese satellite debris. Jonathan McDowell, an astrophysicist at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, told The Guardian that China was not innocent when it came to creating collision risks in space. He also said that it was highly unusual for a country to lodge a complaint through what he called an informational bulletin to the UN. Meanwhile, Chinese state media outlet Global News claimed that so-called experts said the two incidents show that Starlink satellites were being used by the U.S. to test the Chinese space station's ability to respond and maneuver. Some U.S. observers believe the complaint was created as an excuse to suppress Elon Musk's Tesla car company's market share in China. New details have emerged about last week's frightening incident when a freshly docked Russian module started firing its thrusters, causing the International Space Station to flip backwards one and a half times during a dramatic 47-minute tug-of-war. Here are the details. Gizmodo reports that NASA has provided new information about the accident the International Space Station suffered on Thursday, July 29th. The incident happened some three hours after Russia's Nauka module docked to the space station. Russian crew members were working to integrate the module when its thrusters suddenly fired, trying to pull the module away from a space station it was securely docked to. The worst part was that Nauka was configured so that it would receive commands only from a ground station in Russia, and the next pass over Russia was 70 minutes away. Unable to disable Nauka's thrusters, Russian controllers counteracted the momentum by firing thrusters attached to the Zvezda service module. Fearing this might not be enough, they also fired thrusters on a Progress cargo ship docked to the station. This 15-minute tug-of-war finally stopped when Naoka's thrusters suddenly cut out for reasons that are still unclear. With attitude control regained, the flight controllers were able to right the ship. NASA maintains that the crew of seven was never in any danger, but Harvard-Smithsonian astrophysicist Jonathan McDowell told Gizmodo this was one of the more serious incidents in the 24-year history of the ISS. The loss of attitude control, he said, risks breakup of the entire structure. A piece of space debris not much wider than a millimeter has smashed a hole through an important part of the International Space Station. Here are the details. Science Alert reports that a piece of space debris has hit and damaged part of the International Space Station. Photos released by NASA shows a small hole that had been punched through the station's Canadarm2 robotic arm. The arm has been a fixture on the ISS for 20 years. It's a multi-jointed titanium robotic arm that can assist with maneuvering objects outside the ISS. It's unclear exactly when the impact occurred. The damage was first noticed on May 12th during a routine inspection. NASA says the robotic arm seems to be working normally despite the damage. 
The space debris problem does seem to be increasing. Last year, the ISS had to perform emergency maneuvers three times to avoid collisions with space debris at its altitude of around 400 kilometers. An estimated 130 million fragments of man-made material smaller than a millimeter are orbiting Earth right now. Over 23,000 pieces bigger than a softball are being tracked in low Earth orbit to help satellites and the ISS avoid collisions, but the millions of smaller fragments are too small to be tracked. Earth's superpowers have added to this space debris by blowing up satellites with missiles in the past. The latest to do so was China, who blew up one of its orbiting satellites in 2007, adding more than 2 million pieces of scrap larger than a millimeter in size. In Earth's orbit, small fragments like that can travel at speeds of around 32,000 kilometers per hour, each with the potential to cause more damage than a shell fired from a tank. Two weeks ago, a Russian missile struck an old satellite, creating thousands of pieces of space debris that will whiz around Earth at hypersonic speeds for centuries to come. This cloud of microbullets is now threatening the International Space Station. Here are the details. The Guardian reports that NASA called off a spacewalk on Tuesday, November 30th because of a cloud of space debris that was created when Russia blew up an old satellite as part of a missile test. Any piece of that cloud of space debris can puncture an astronaut's suit or damage the International Space Station. The space station and its crew of seven have been at increased risk from fast-moving pieces of debris since Russia blew up the satellite two weeks ago. Two U.S. astronauts were scheduled to replace a damaged antenna on the outside of the space station, but late on Monday night, NASA says it learned that a piece of orbiting debris might come dangerously close. SpaceX founder Elon Musk also announced on Tuesday that the company had to shift some Starlink satellite orbits to reduce the probability of collision. He added that the space station and SpaceX Dragon capsules have micrometeorite shields for ultra-high velocity impact absorption, but spacesuits do not. Hence, there is a higher risk for spacewalks. The Russian missile strike generated thousands of pieces of space junk that are now hurtling around the Earth at around 27,400 km per hour, much faster than the speed of a bullet. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.